Hello my dear students. So now after completing all the required basics of exercise 1.1, I think we are ready to solve, sorry exercise 1.5. I think we are ready to solve this exercise, exercise 1.5. So let's start with this exercise 1.5 which actually I think most of you all must have already done. But in case if any doubt is there, so it can be removed. Classify the following numbers as rational or irrational number. This is the question number one. So here, what are they asking us to classify the following numbers? Classify the these numbers as rational or irrational. So definitely here what happens, my dear students, you have to first solve the, simplify the given question as much as possible. The first one is 2 minus root 5. Keep it in this way. First one is 2 minus root 5. 2 minus root 5. Now you can see this. 2 is a rational number and root 5 is an irrational number. They are operating in some way or the other. That means addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, whatever they are. But if a rational number and irrational number, they operate with each other in the most simplified form, then this is a rational number. Fine. Then you talk about the second question. Second question, they are giving 3 plus root 23 in one bracket minus root 23. See, this is not the simplified form. You have to still open the bracket and see if the like terms are there. They will solve. So you will have to open the bracket over here and you will get 3 plus root 23 minus root 23. And this here what happens? They are like terms over here, root 23 and minus root 23. They will get cancel so what stays is 3 only 3 and 3 is a rational number therefore 3 plus root 23 minus root 23 is a rational number here also you can say is a rational Number. Basically, this 3 is a rational number, hence the whole given expression is also a rational number. Coming to the third one, 2 root 7 upon 7 root 7. If you will see over here also, 2 root 7 upon 7 root 7, here root 7 and root 7 will get cancelled and then what you get is, is equal to 2 upon 7. This is a rational number. Therefore, the given question that is 2 root 7 upon 7 root 7 is a rational number. See, this is the presentation criteria I am showing you all people and you have to solve it and show. You can't just write it most of the time students just take this and write it over there it is a rational number that is not accepted actually you have to bring it to the simplified form now this is a simplified form and in this simplified form one is a rational number and the denominator root 2 is an irrational number therefore this is an irrational number fine so where do we reach the fifth question fifth question is 2 pi now here if you'll see 2 is again a rational number and pi is an irrational number so this is also an irrational number okay my dear students so with this we finished with question number one and now we go to question number two fine for question number two, they, have, they are asking us to simplify each of the following expression. We have to just simplify that. Means basically you have to solve it. This is question number two. Simplify. Simplify. So here what happens, you have to just now, you have to notice what it, what is happening. Whether you can apply an identity or you are just going to multiply the two brackets. Now in this case, 
the first term and first term are different second term and second term are different so here you are not going to apply any identity you will just have to multiply the two brackets so what happens when you multiply the two brackets this you are not supposed to do in your answer paper i'm just showing you three will multiply with both the terms of the bracket and you will get three into two plus 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 three into root two once first term has multiplied with the bracket now the second term will go and multiply with the bracket so again plus 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 root 3 into 2 plus 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 that will again give you root 3 into root 2 fine now i will have to multiply wherever the multiplication multiplication definitely takes place even if the terms are unlike terms but then only radical will multiply with the radical this is the, these both are in the radical the so 3 into 2 root 6 will get but here they are not in the radical radical multiplies with the radical and coefficient multiply with the coefficient so 2 will multiply with the coefficient no coefficient in coefficient is 1 so 2 ones are 2 root 3 same will happen over here 3 ones are 3 root 2 remember while multiplication coefficient multiplies with the coefficient radical multiplies with the radical so here this is your end answer this is the simplified form because again if you will see while addition subtraction like terms add or subtract or like radicals add or subtract so here 3 root 2 this is root 2 and this is root 3 they are not like radicals root 2 root 3 they are unlike radicals so here addition subtraction won't take place okay now we go to the second question second question asks us to solve 3 plus root 3 in one bracket in another bracket 3 minus root 3 now if you'll pay attention over here in this question the first term is equal to the first term second term is equal to the second term both the first term and second terms are matching they are equal and the sign in between them is a opposite sign so we will have to use the identity by identity what is the identity a plus b into a minus b right a first terms second terms are equal and opposite signs in between we get square of second term first term minus always this is going to be always minus square of the second term we get what do we get if i apply it over here square of the first term three square always minus square of the second term that is root three square so what do i get three square is nine root three square is three this will become six therefore 3 plus root 3 in one bracket in another bracket 3 minus root 3 is equal to 6 fine so now we come to third question in third question we have got root 5 plus root to the whole square now pay attention my dear students here actually what happens we can use root 5 plus root to the whole square definitely and also for root 5 plus root 2 into root 5 plus root 2 both are going to mean the same but but identity that we are going to use it by identity which identity a plus b the whole square is going to be equal to a square plus whatever is the sign over here that will come as a first sign two will come from outside into a into b means into first term into second term this one is always going to be plus irrespective of what the sign is over here now this is going to be plus b square so here what do we get we get a square means the square of the first term that is root 5 square plus the sign over here 2 comes from outside into first term into second term fine first term into second term this is always going to be the plus sign and the second term square so this will give me 5 plus 2 root 5 into root 2 will give me 2 root 10 2 root 10 plus root 2 square will be 2 now this again you will add up these are like terms they will add up 7 plus 2 root 10 you have to be very careful you have to keep an eye on that like terms are there or not if like terms are there then they will definitely follow the rules of addition and subtraction and get solved always have the habit of writing the solution in this fashion
okay my dear students so this is complete question number third is also over now we move to question number four question number four is asking us to solve root five minus root two in one bracket and another bracket we have got root five plus root two see this is again going to be the same identity first term is equal to first term second term is equal to second term and the middle signs are opposite signs so by identity a plus b in one bracket in another bracket a minus b you get square of first term always minus square of second term so by using this identity we get what square of first term first term is root 5 square of that minus square of second term square second term is root 2 so we get this this is equal to root 5 square is going to be 5 minus 2 this is going to be 3 therefore root 5 minus root 2 into root 5 plus root 2 is going to be equal to 3 this is your solution fine question number 4 is over and with that question number 4 question number 2 is over now for the question number 3 actually you can overlook this, look, overlook this question actually here what they are asking is recall pi is defined as the ratio of circumference say c of a circle to its diameter basically what do you mean by this pi is defined as ratio of circumference of a circle to its diameter basically what do they mean to say is that we know that circumference formula of circumference is of course there are two formulas one is pi d and also circumference is equal to 2 pi r so if from this formula any of this but now they are asking you to use pi d circumference diameter and pi pi circumference and diameter the relation is over here so if you find pi from here you, if you go to define pi pi is defined as if you go to define pi d you will shift the other side you will get c upon d is equal to pi this is the definition of pi it is the ratio of circumference to the diameter ratio of circumference of a circle to its diameter and you know that pi is an irrational number when will pi be an irrational number only if circumference or diameter is an irrational number so that's what that this seems to contradict but there is no contradiction the fact that pi is irrational how will you resolve this contradiction basically one of the two is going to be an irrational number and that time the pi becomes an irrational number if you will otherwise go to divide this also if you will go to divide this then also if you, you will see that you will always get a non-terminating non-repeating fraction so in both the cases either the either of the two circumference or the diameter is going to be a irrational number or if you if they both are rational number then if you will go to divide them then you will get a non-terminating non-repeating fraction that's why pi is an irrational number okay so you can overlook overlook this question actually speaking you don't have to give an explanation you just have to this is basically knowledge based question so coming to question number four question number four they are asking you to represent root 9.3 on the number line so representing root 9.3 on the number line this also basics we have completed and what we are normally doing is that we what we do is that we draw a 15 centimeter line from here now 9.3 they are asking us to solve so draw to locate the 9.3 this is 9.3 plus 1 centimeter means 10.3 centimeter fine my dear students now this is going to be my from here to here this is going to be my 10.3 centimeter and now I have to draw a semicircle for this 10.3 to get a semicircle for this 10.3 i require the center that is the 
center of that for that I will have to draw a perpendicular bisector remember my ah, but now this is going to be a slight of a problem not much or maybe yes otherwise I will have to change otherwise I will have to change I will have to go to the next page but maybe not yes I am through okay so this from here remember for 10.3 you have to draw a perpendicular bisector to draw a perpendicular bisector for 10.3 and of course the purpose of this perpendicular bisector is only to give me the center of the semicircle nothing other than that so I can have a dotted line over here it is not the part of the figure as such now this is going to be my center and this semicircle starts from here just to see whether I have got it right I will take it on the other side yes it is dropping well nicely on 10.3 so this I have come over here fine now what happens this 10.3 is definitely going to shoot all the 90 degrees sorry this 10.3 10 is definitely going to shoot all the 90 degrees on all these infinite number of points on the semicircle but I want only that 90 degree where uh, if a perpendicular is drawn from this 9.3 now the 9.3 will come where it drops the semicircle so what I will do I will have draw, to draw a perpendicular I will have to draw a perpendicular from here for that I will make first two arcs one on the left hand side and the other on the right hand side and then two intersecting arcs on the top fine two intersecting arcs on the top and connect the two this will definitely be the perpendicular now this perpendicular is going to be in this fashion fine actually this is going to be a 90 degree it's not asked to be drawn if you want you can draw the geometric mean is going to be this is for your sake you don't actually have to draw I have explained you how the property of geometric mean works over here see this if you will measure it is going to be a 90 degree angle just because it is the angle subtended by the diameter is always going to be 90 degree therefore this A D C is 90 degree and because this angle A D C is 90 degree and also this D B is a perpendicular drawn on the hypotenuse therefore it will it will start the rule that BD square is equal to AB into BC this is how the working goes so this is basically your 9.3 centimeter and this is your 1 centimeter so this is not asked but if you want to understand by geometric mean property what you get is BD square is equal to AB into BC AB into BC so BD square we don't know the value of BD square is equal to 9.3 into 1 so BD square is equal to 9.3 and if I take a square root of both the sides I will get BD is equal to root 9.3 therefore BD is equal to B E that is I am going to drop on the number line fine my dear students so this B D I am going to drop on the number line from here here fine and this is my You can do it in this fashion if you want root 
centimeter fine if there is any confusion let that go fine this is going to be up to 9.3 and to remove all other confusions you can paper it over here also root 9.3 fine okay my dear students so this will not create any confusion and your diagram will be a complete diagram no need for deduction of any marks no scope for that okay fine so by this we have shown root 9.3 actually this you need not show but if it's good that you know the concept of this figure this dotted line triangle also is not needed but you remember that if in case you come across teacher wants to test you you can definitely let her test fifth one which is very important again rationalize the denominators rationalize the denominator fine here what happens the first question 1 upon root 7 so we have a monomial in the denominator so when you have a monomial in the denominator you just have to multiply and divide by the irrational part the irrational part is root 7 so now if i solve it numerator will multiply with the numerator 1 into root 7 root 7 denominator will multiply with the denominator root 7 into root 7 will give me 7 that's all so this is the denominator rationalized fine now we go to the second question second question is dealing with the binomial 1 upon 1 upon root 7 minus root 6 so this is 1 upon root 7 minus root 6 so because it is a binomial we will have to conjugate find the conjugate of the denominator and then multiply and divide by the conjugate of the denominator now here my dear students when you are dealing with binomial it becomes very important that you put them into a bracket the conjugate is going to be plus fine conjugate is that the same terms first term and second term same except if there is a minus sign over here you have to put a plus sign over there and similarly over here root 7 plus root 6 now you will multiply the two you will get root 7 plus root 6 because this is anyhow going to be 1 into something but in the denominator what happens first term first term are same second term second term are same signs are reversed so since a plus b into a minus b is equal to a square minus b square using this identity we will get first term root 7 square always minus second term root 6 square so what do we get over here root 7 plus root 6 upon root 7 square will become 7 root 6 square will become 6 what do we get over here is root 7 plus root 6 upon 1 1 is a rational number so the denominator has got a rationalized fine my dear students so coming to the next question third question third question asks us to rationalize this 1 upon root 5 plus root 2 again we have a binomial in the denominator when there is a binomial in the denominator the same thing you will do you will find the conjugate conjugate is going to be root 5 minus root 2 multiply and divide by the conjugate and you have to be very careful put them into the bracket so now these are the fractions numerator upon denominator numerator upon denominator so numerator will multiply the denominator denominator will multiply with the denominator so you will get root 5 minus root 2 upon this will be following the identity a minus b into a plus b is equal to a square minus b square this will be root 5 square minus root 2 square so root 5 minus root 2 root 5 square will give you 5 root 2 square will give you 2 so what you get is root 5 minus 
to, to 5 minus 2 will give you 3. So, the denominator is rationalized. Fine. And now we have the fourth question. With that, I suppose we will be finishing with exercise 1.5. Last question of the exercise. 1 upon root 7 minus 2. So, if I go to solve this, again I will do the same thing. There is a binomial 1 upon root 7 minus 2. Multiply and divide by the conjugate. Conjugate is root 7 plus 2 upon root 7 plus 2. So, if I multiply this, I will get in the numerator root 7 plus 2 upon here again a minus b into a plus b is equal to a square minus b square. This will become a square is root 7 square, b square is 2 square. So this will become root 7 plus 2 upon root 7 square is 7 minus but 2 square is 4. So you get root 7 plus 2. 7 minus 4 is 3. Here also the denominator is rationalized. I hope you all are getting this. With this, we finish our exercise 1.5. Okay, my dear students. So, solve this exercise. Actually, you should solve it on your own and when you have any doubt, for referring the doubt, referring, refer this video. Actually speaking, just by referring the videos of basics of exercise 1.4 there are 1.5 there are approximately 1 point apart 8 9 basics are there for 1.5 so you will have to go through all those videos once you understand those videos then this exercise 1.5 becomes very easy and only after that you should go through this video study this video of exercise 1.5 Okay, my dear students, thank you very much. See you soon with exercise 1.6, which will be the last exercise of this chapter. All the best. Do well. Love you all.